Hello, how's it going? Um, I'm Sarah Mee Duffy and this is So So Live where I just sew with you whatever I'm working on and I try to make things that I think that um, most people are interested in um, but I definitely am going to make things that I like too. So um, always feel free to make a suggestion and um, I'm a noob streamer so forgive some of my quality issues like no sound sometimes <laughs> just fast forward a little bit. I got a comment today I'm like yeah I'm sorry. I'm a beginner at this um, but I'm not a beginner at sewing and um, I really love helping other people sew and um, making this easier for them because it's not easy and I know that really, really well. I make mistakes every day, uh, multiple times a day, uh, but it's just the nature of it. So, you know, you're doing two different things at once. You're operating a machine and you're trying to put something together. So it does have a secondary layer of complications and frustrations and not all machines are the same and not all projects are the same. And what I really like to say often is, you know, we don't get to sew 15 of these before we make our final one, right? So you don't get to practice over and over again like you do with other things. And you know, like in knitting, it's a very slow process. You can kind of take your time to get there and kind of figure it out as you go. Whereas sewing is a little faster and it can be really forgiving, but it also can be really unforgiving. I've definitely chucked my share of projects directly into the trash can because it was just beyond, you know, fixing or beyond what I wanted to tolerate fixing. So, so anyway, today I thought I would make my husband some jeans. It's been a while since I've made anything for him. Um, I think like right after we started dating, I made him a button up shirt, which totally floored him. And um, his delight over it was, you know, really meant a lot to me. He still has that shirt, doesn't wear it, but you know, it's been a long time. And I just, you know, don't need to keep making myself clothes, right? So I thought I'd make him some jeans and I saw that on the Love to Sew podcast that they were doing a menswear issue this week. Hi, Ida, how's it going? So um, I thought I would try out these Jutland pants by Thread Theory Designs, <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll see how it goes. And so he likes uh, cycling. So you'll see I have this like subtle stitching on his back pockets. Do you guys think that's too much? Hi, Christina, how's it going? So um, it's like in a few different colors of thread, brown, black, dark gray. I think it's subtle enough that he might be okay with it. He doesn't mind a little bit of flair, but he is a pretty, you know, you know, he's a guy who has to go to work and he wants to look a certain way. He works in an industry where there's a lot of outdoor of kind of crossover, outdoor industry crossover, and he does love biking. He always has. So I thought this would be fun. And um, I have a fun surprise for his pockets. I'm going to use these as his pocket lining. So fabric I've been hoarding for a really long time. It's one of the first fabrics I had in the chicken boots line and I have just a little tiny bit left that I squirreled away. You can see the stitching better on the back. See that? So put a wheel and then um, this is kind of to represent a path, you know, like you're riding down the road. I used to be a full-time bike commuter myself when I met him. Hi Ida, I know that's you struggling with the twill. But you got it figured out now. <laughs> I know, Twill is so weird. Hi, Malin, how's it going? Ah, oh, thanks, Lil Miss Princess Me. Okay, what do I mean? I'm gonna call you, um, do you want me to call you Princess or Lil Miss? <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, I know. I actually, like, I was really worried about getting that, that wheel stitching right, but it ended up being a lot easier. And you know, um, I followed, um, hi, Carol. Oh, awesome. Um, I follow this woman, her Instagram account is Zeriano, Z-E-R-I-A-N-O. I follow it on my Chicken Boots account and her stitching is so inspirational. She does a lot of, um, drawing on her, on her stuff with her machine. Like she's not doing embroidery. She does a lot of this, but, oh, she's, she's, it's really cute what she does. And, um, I was thinking about her yesterday when I stitched these, so... So anyway, um, let's see, we are making the Jutland pants, but you know, if you are making jeans for even for yourself, a lot of these skills will cross over. And we make a lot of jeans on this stream, I've noticed, so I hope that's okay with you guys. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I've got a pair of his pants here. 
I have a feeling, my, my husband's very, um, he's thin and um, not much taller than me, so he's not a really big, big guy, and sizing can be tricky for him. So I have a feeling these might be a little big, even if I did make the proper size and kind of check it out, because the leg looks a little fuller, but I looked at the hashtag, I looked at all the guys wearing these, and it didn't look too full, and she does have them modeled on, um, a guy that's kind of similar in stature to my husband. So I'm kind of hoping that just because these are much wider than the pair of pants he gave me, they're not going to be too baggy down there on his lower leg because that looks weird. It looks like they're wearing their dad's clothing when it's too big like that, in my opinion, you know. And uh, But the one thing, this is what's interesting. When I asked him, I said, so tell me, um, show me your favorite pair of pants or a pair of jeans you like the fit of. Um, and what you would change about them. And so he pulled out a pair of jeans and he he said, um, I just want the bottoms to be big enough to go over my shoes. And I was like, wait, you don't put your shoes on first before you put your pants on. He's like, no, 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 no. So that it sits over the top of his shoe. That is a pet peeve for him because sometimes the shoe may be a little bit bulky at the top and then it just gets hung up and like gets all folded down there and it sits above his shoe. And so these will definitely not do that. They're much wider. So if they're too wide, though, I can still taper them on the out seam because I'm going to probably not top stitch that until I know for sure that they fit him really well. So that's the, the funny thing that that's the only fit thing. Like a, a woman would have been like, well, I want this change, this change, this change on the upper part of the pant, right? <laughs> but the guy that like that's what, you know. They just don't have as many curves usually to fight over, you know. Um, but I also felt like that was a really interesting thing because a lot of people I know, um, like Brooke you see in the stream and a couple other women that talk about making jeans with me, they're always looking for a jean that has the right treatment at the bottom that they want before they look at the top. And I always think that's so interesting that more of us are focused on down here than I realize. We are really concerned with the fit at the top, but I think like style dictates and proportion dictates um, what the pant looks like down here is what we're also really keen on. And this is the easiest thing to change on a pair of pants. So if you find a pair of pants that fits at the top, it's really easy to taper or, or make it wider down there. Yeah, right, Ida? I know. He hates it, too. The other thing he hates, my husband is not wasteful at all. Um, he's very, uh, like, the company he works at is very concerned with um, environmental issues, uh, water issues, single-use plastic. That's some. Those are some of their really big focuses. But I literally last year saw him throw a brand new pair of pants in the donation bin because the other pet peeve he has, and this is really typical with men's clothing, is when they're made out of a fabric that the first time you put them through the washer and dryer, they get creases in them that actually um, distress the fabric enough that there's like a fade line where the crease is and you can't, you can't get rid of that fade line. Even if you can get rid of the crease, you can't get rid of the fade line. Um, and he, that is a pet peeve for him. And I, that is really kind of a, a problem. Like I always think they have it easy, but they have their issues too with what they buy in the fabrics that are catering to their market. So I really made sure when I cut out this, this uh, pair of jeans that um, I avoided any areas that when it came out of the washer and dryer were already starting to wrinkle because I feel like that, like it just, it's like the fabric learns that, you know, and it sticks to it. So anyway, let's get sewing. So I am not doing on um, the cargo pockets. I actually picked this pair of pants because I thought he would really like this. And he said, no, I just need a pair of jeans. <laughs> so um, I had to alter it a little bit because there's not a back yoke on this pattern. And I will show you my pattern pieces, how I did that. If you ever have to do that. Because um, it's not as hard as you would think. Okay, so... The pattern originally, this is the line right here. And this is the line right here. You can't quite see that, but it's, okay, see that? Okay, and this was a dart. Can you see that dart? I've got it taped really well now. Let's see, can you see my dart in there? So what I did was I measured down on the pant where I wanted the yoke line to be. Um, so I measured from the seam line 
right here. This is the waist seam right here, ha uh, 5 eighths inch in. And then um, I measured how far I wanted his back yoke to be at the center back. And then I drew a line on the pattern there. And then I cut that off after, after I actually taped the dart shut. I taped the dart shut on the paper first. And then I cut that off. And then, you know, I also measured on the side seam where, how wide I wanted it. Did, I wanted it like an inch and a quarter or something like that. And then I added the seam allowance to those two pieces. We can take this part of the dart, which like, I think it was like five eighths of an inch when it hit here. And I shaved off that five eighths of an inch right here on the side seam. So I shaved it off and then um, added my seam allowance back here and here and I leave that dart closed there. So now this is the yoke and it's a little bit more curved than you usually see a yoke but I'm just gonna go with it. It's probably gonna fit really nicely because of that. So that is one of my biggest modifications I made to this pattern was just adding the yoke. She does sell a pattern with a yoke that you don't have to do this with. It was just that I um, underestimated what his preferences were gonna be, so. Alrighty, so um, I'm gonna start with, so these, uh, this pattern also comes with a fully lined version and it comes with two different views. I don't have both views here, let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. So, so basically I'm making this view here, but with patch pockets on the back and a yoke. So that's the big difference. So these are not seams on the pattern. They're just um, extra layers of fabric and you can do things like insert knee pads in there, like make work pants for someone. Um, you could even modify the fit on these to modify, you know, for a woman. And um, let's see, what else am I doing? So I'm not, I was going to do a welt pocket in the back, but when he said he really wanted a pair of denim pants, like jeans, I was like, I'm not going to, sorry guys, I'm not going to put a welt pocket in um, denim. Uh, that's just, that's a little, that's a little heavy for that. And I, style wise, I just wasn't too keen on the way that would look. Maybe a lighter weight denim, but this isn't a lightweight denim. And this is a denim with zero stretch. So um, I don't have very much of this. I was really glad I had some in my my uh, fabric stash, I don't have a huge fabric stash. I was planning on making him navy blue canvas work pants and he said, I need jeans. So <laughs> no problem, <laughs> we got this right. I had one zipper left. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's the modifications I'm doing. I think I cut about five inches off the bottom of them because I'm going to probably commit to the length when I sew these at the end before trying them on him. I can always change that, but I'm pretty confident. Men's wear um, and the inseam, they, they pretty much don't change that. Like men don't want this pair longer and this pair shorter. They're, they're pretty all over or pretty committed to that. So I made a little cheat sheet of my steps because I had to look through the instructions, cut out all the lined areas, um, the welt pocket areas, and I am and I did a trial fly because she sews it really differently than um, most of the patterns I've ever used. And <laughs> let's, let's hope it goes well because my first one was meh. <laughs> I didn't really like it. And so I did make an alteration to my pattern to accommodate um, kind of a hybrid style of her, her fly sewing. But I see a lot of people really like the way she does it. So that's why I want to commit to trying it out. So um, I'm gonna use this uh, gold thread that I've used before. I'm gonna hem my pockets first. So when I did this stitching, you can see my line. Can you see that it's not straight anymore at the top there? So, you know, I gotta kinda pay attention to that because I really want my pockets to be hemmed an ident identical amount at the top on both sides. So um, I really wanted to make sure but I didn't do one and an inch and one and three quarters of an inch or, you know, if I have to go around that, if I were to start and go from this point to this point and stitch right on that edge, I, I might miss that center part. So it's just something to think about. In fact, I'll do this one first. The other thing I did, I never really surge my pockets. You'll see that I did here, but can you see how much this fabric is um, shredding? So 
I feel like I'm preventing an issue where the threads from the sides of the pockets are going to poke out of his pocket in the back. You know, that's my pet peeve if you've been here enough. I have jeans that do that and it drives me crazy because, you know, I don't carry scissors in my back pocket to trim those darn threads off. So. So I'm going to sew from the top because I don't have gold on the bottom. Oh, I also wanted to note that you see how I surged this, these edges. I did this edge first and then this edge. And that is because I want these tails to be down here rather than um, coming out, you know, like, well, I guess they would have been either way. This isn't actually a good example of that. Never mind. All right. So uh, I made new notches to match each pocket after I did all my serging. Now, I hope the gold thread worked. I'm kind of toying with doing um, brown thread, but oh, I just not, I want, I don't want them to look home sewn too much, you know? So we'll see. Yeah, see that's already a little bit off. So what I'm gonna look at is where this is gonna fold. And see, but see, it's already off a little bit. Oh, my first stitch of the day and I'm already a little bit off. But um, this is pretty easy to take out. The tension when I have the heavier thread on top and the lighter weight on the bottom does be, is a little bit um, easy to remove, I should say. But on my pocket is when I'm going to try and dial in those tension issues, you know, before I get to the construction of the pant. Um, and I will switch to a navy blue thread for the main seams and not use this decorative stitching thread. So are you guys sewing? Anybody sewing here? And I should say, um, if you are new here, welcome. Everyone's super lovely here and nice. We're really gentle and um, really interested in what you're making. But if you want to chat with us and we really want you to be able to chat with us, you need to create what's called a YouTube channel, which is the same thing as an account. It just um, enables you to be able to chat in videos, streams, leave comments, things like that. It's just their way of cutting down on people, trolling, stuff like that, you know. It's pretty quick to do. And you don't, just because they call it a channel does not mean you have to start like <laughs> posting videos or anything. All right. I always get rid of my under thread once I'm done ripping something out. So let's see if I can get this a little bit straighter. See, the thing is, my old notch is there, and it kind of wants to fold there, and this right here is fighting me to fold there. I'm going to kind of eyeball this where I want this to be. It's kind of um, a good analogy to biking, right? Like when you're mountain biking, you look at where you want your tire to go, not where your tire is. And uh, that way you don't end up in those potholes. So you don't look at the pothole. <laughs> you look at where you want to go. It's the same with sewing. I use that analogy occasionally. I know it's funny, but it's really true. I learned that the hard way in, in when I used to be a mountain biker. All right, so we're going to look at our stitching there. I'm looking at the overall pocket height. I'm being a little bit more careful on these because they're not for me. So look at, I have to put, fold this down a little bit more and it's because I lost a little on this pocket because of the stitching. It really, hi Leah, no worries. We're barely in here. <laughs> I've, you only missed my mistake. So there you go. You haven't missed anything yet. You'll notice I, I don't need pins for this. I have a little bit more versatility without them. And why not just use this as a guide, right? The machine wants to sew in a straight line. Hi, Petey. Okay. Ah. 
Oh, nice. Oh, good. I'm really glad. Are you making jeans then, Petey? Is that why? Okay. All right, let's put these on my pants here. Let's hope, oh yeah, cherry pie is here. Right. So when I mark my pockets, I mark, I put my pen in where I want it, the marking to be. And that's just the way I've taught myself over the years to pay attention to my way of marking. So you'll see I have the pen going into the spot right there. And then when I pull these apart, they're the same. See that wrinkle? <laughs> So I think this is going to be uh, the, the right back pocket. So at least this pocket is going to cover this wrinkle. I'm really hoping that this wrinkle here, see that? See, that's what I'm talking about when um, the laundry starts creating wrinkles in your clothing. This one's not as bad as if it was down here at the bottom. And I can cover it up with this pocket. Hopefully the pocket's going to train it to not keep doing that as well. Nice, Petey. That's awesome. You can do it. They're really not that hard. And then I have a video on sewing the zipper fly if, you, if, that, if that is something of use to you. That's just the zipper fly so that you don't have to watch the whole video over and over again because sewing pants is actually quite easy. Um, it's really not even very many seams. In fact, I sometimes have trouble stretching this out into two streams. So I'm gonna start my uh, pocket upside down. Ooh, actually, am I? I'm gonna double stitch these, you guys, so I actually don't need to start them upside down this time. But I am gonna make sure that this right here gets sunk down in there, that little edge right there. So I use an industrial machine if you're new here, and um, it doesn't mean that you can't do any of this on your home machine. I just really enjoy using an industrial machine. My machine can't do anything but so in a straight line. So there's no zigzag, no buttonholes, no nothing. So it does have that limitation. I have a really nice older, no, I wouldn't call it older. I mean, it's like, ew. I want to say it's like 15 or no, it's like 17 years old. It feels new to me still. <laughs> uh, home machine. And that's what I use to do my buttons and buttonholes. So I think ironing this would be a really great idea because that way you get these two angles here at the same angle. But you know me, I like to live on the edge. I'm going to move my tools out of the way. Oh, nice, Carol. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's awesome that she has that tutorial. I actually looked at her zipper fly tutorial yesterday, too. But um, it didn't end up like I it was the same as her instructions in the in the um, the booklet. I just was a little confused on the order or the way it folds back you know like I got the first step the one that was probably most people would think is tricky I'm just gonna keep going I'm not gonna back tack yet I really hate uh, back tacks in the middle of my pocket top stitching so I really try to be sure I get a nice continuous look. I need one more stitch. There we go. I was a little far from the edge there. I could tell when I was sewing it. I think I might have to take that out. See that? I'm going to take that out for just a little bit. And hopefully disguise it like right here. The top stitching really shows every little thing you do. I don't want to get grab my uh, decorative stitching by accident there. Just 
just to like right here. I think I can blend it in just using the same stitch holes as I did. <laughs> oh, we got a new, oh, we got an all. Awesome. <laughs> I really love the all. I don't know like how that came about that I started using it, but well, I know for binding. I, when you see me bind, you'll see I'm heavily dependent on an all. Um, and you know, like, I do find like with an industrial machine, it's interesting. I people I get the most common question from people who don't sew, aren't you afraid you're gonna sew yourself on your machine? And I and I'm not like I'm not afraid I'm not gonna i I'm not gonna sew myself because that I'm going to sew myself because I, I don't want that to happen so badly that it's not even a thought. Like <laughs> there's like my hands aren't near the needle in that kind of way, right? Like you you know you're a sewer that that's just not a danger. But um with my machine having this automatic um, presser foot raising system with my heel or my knee, especially with the heel, it's a bit snappy. And you, the the thing I get caught on the most is I'll be my finger will be right here and it'll go up and whack my finger into the screw right there. And let me tell you, that is so painful. It like shocks you. You just don't expect it because you're nowhere near the needle. And then I think that they like thought process in your head is, oh my gosh, I just sewed myself, but you're like, wait, but I wasn't sewing, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll be handy doing that, bi that backpack bias. I had to do that on the, um, what was it you guys? Oh, the making backpack. Cause you, you bind the inside of that and the last two steps. I'm almost done here. Sorry guys. I always have one pocket where things don't go well. So this, it's this one. So I'm gonna make sure my needle hole is in the same place as the last, the fir those first stitches there. And I'm really looking at the distance between my top first, top, my last top stitching right there, rather than looking at the fold of the pocket. Because the fold is far less noticeable than the top stitching. This looks okay. It's looking home so to me, um, a little bit. I think this yellow is just not quite right. But that's fairly invisible. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I told him, you don't have to wear these. He's so supportive. He's like, cool, you're making pants, you know. But there's no pressure, right? Okay, I'm actually going to check to see if my pockets are the same height on each side. My um, markings are really important, but I feel like um, symmetry is more important when it comes to something like this. He's not going to be looking at his butt. He's not going to notice. You know, every time he walks by me and I notice it, it's going to bug me. <laughs> Plus, if he ever does wear these and he says, oh, my wife made these, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I want them to look pretty good. <laughs> I really need to sew for him more often and, and uh, others. I'm not sure my daughter's too interested right now, but um, you know. All right, here we go. I always pin kind of in the middle so that I don't have to remove these pins later on. My glasses keep slipping down, it's driving me nuts. But you know, the, my glasses do this other thing where my little hairs right here get caught do you guys have that? Oh, I should have, I like when I first got them, they said come back for any adjustments and they actually did really well for a long time. So I didn't come back. I need to go back. Both my pairs of glasses do it. It drives me crazy. I'm gonna move this a little further in. I always do two so that, cause if you put one, it can do this, you know. Dealey Bobby don't really want that.
I really love this denim. I'm kind of jealous I'm using it on his pants. I wanted to be brave and sew some non-stretch pants for myself, you know. <laughs> Are you talking about the glasses, Christina? Yeah, it is so painful when that happens and it's like your glasses are stuck to your head that doesn't look that doesn't look symmetrical to me you can't tell if it's the um this stitching or the uh, way i'm folding it Yeah, like when my hairs get caught right there, then um, I can't like move my glasses because they're grabbed on. And so it's like this artful way of getting it to open just enough to let go. It's so painful. It's such a sensitive little area. Does that look okay? I can't tell. I throw everything on the ground, but I try not to throw my pins on the ground. <laughs> Make it right there for that last stitch. One, two, three. I think this thread, um, honestly, it looks better after you've washed your pants once and it gets a little bit of the blue on it, you know? Because when it's all bright and shiny, it's like anything. I'm gonna tighten my tension up. Ooh, maybe not that much. Did you hear that? It said, no, stop that. Okay, so here's my pet peeve. You see these little threads right here? This is the denim. So I'm actually gonna trim that a little bit. And then I'm going to push it in there. And if I can, I'm going to take, oh, there is a pin in there. I looked for a pin. Um, I'm going to take this little corner and I'm going to kind of fold it in there. I hate it when there's threads coming out of my back pockets and I don't know it. And then I catch a glimpse of that in a mirror. I kind of wish I would have done that on the other side now. Alrighty. What do we think? Do we think we like that? With the, his stitching on his back pocks is very subtle. What do you guys think? I think it's going to be okay. It's, it's a uh, much brighter in person for me. I'm trying to make it so it's visible for you guys, the lighting, but not too overexposed because I don't want to blow out your eyeballs, you know? All right, I'm going to um, sew this back seam and maybe I will do my first flat felled seam on the pants just to kind of get my sewing legs under me. Oh, actually, no, 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 I'm gonna put my yolks on. Yolks. All right, so let's see. You want the deeper one at the center back. Oh, I forgot to serge my top of my, um, could I do that with a flat felled seam? I wouldn't need, um, I wouldn't need to serge that if I do a flat felled seam right there. So when you do a flat felled seam, it's kind of like, oh, thanks, Brooke. Um, kind of like a French steam, kind of. So you sew it wrong sides together like this. Actually, I'll be fully transparent with you guys. I don't have a lot of experience sewing flat belt seams. I learned how to do them a long time ago because I wanted to know what was behind them. But um, I haven't had a need for them. And I like French seams and, you know, I just haven't, haven't had the chance. So when you do them, you put it right wrong sides together. This one has 5 8 inch seam allowance. You sew it the 5 8 inch. So then you have your seam. You trim one to a quarter of an inch. And then the other one, 
folds over like that and then you top stitch it down and then you would see a line of stitching right here as well so we'll just try it I'll just show you what I mean right now why not right it's a good practice because it's a nice short seam ah but I need to do it on the other side because uh, my bobbin is blue and I want my gold thread to show. So this seam is going to show. So it's different in that, different from a uh, French seam in that a French seam ends up on the inside of the garment, whereas a flat felled seam ends up on the right side of the garment. So when you look at your jeans from now on, you'll probably look at them differently. Feeling that curve, yo. There we go. So now I would trim this one down right here to like a quarter of an inch with my itty bitty scissors. Be a little easier with my bigger ones there. You would not have to serge this. That one edge is serged because I was planning on just sewing it as a regular seam with serging, but I forgot that the uh, top of the pants need to be done too. I was thinking, oh, the waistband goes there. I don't need to serge that. So then you would meet this edge to that one, fold it under, and top stitch it down. This is going to be interesting. What I also like about an awl is that um, it's stronger than the tip of your seam ripper. So you can really hoik on something without worrying you're going to break the tip off of your seam ripper. Um, and I, I feel like seam rippers are such a personal, um, oh, I just don't like this, you guys. I don't like this. I don't like the way this looks, sorry. I don't like the way it looks. actually looks better than I thought. Oh well. I'm going to take this out a little bit. Doing denim flat felt seems a little trickier than like I did a practice because I was like okay let's remember how to do this. <laughs> but I did it on quilting cotton and I knew I told myself like this is not denim but I did not want to use any more of this denim. Hoping I have just enough to do a skirt with what's left. Okay. Partly my problem is that I don't want any of that surging stitch to show that I did. And uh, my serger stitch is a little bit wide, so. Okay, so pressing the seam open, very helpful. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Why, <laughs> Why am I cracking you up? <laughs> This is, and it's a curve too. Why oh why do I do these things to myself? I think I'm so clever. I almost changed my mind and just sewed canvas as a muslin for him. But oh man, you guys, I am so busy for the next um, couple months. I just wouldn't be able to get back to these for a while and I really want him to have a pair of jeans. That actually looks really nice. What do you guys think? And you see he still has his curt the dark shaping in there. All right. We'll try it again with this one. Okay, I want my, and my stitching's gonna show, so I have to make sure, because I've only got the yellow on one side. 
<laughs> I don't know why I'm cracking you up. <laughs> Yeah, my sea moss is getting a little narrow there. A little narrow. Right there. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about that too, Christina. <clears throat> it makes me want to look at some of my jeans a little closer. The thing is, when you look at some of your ready to wear stuff, it's such a great model for um, like how you may want to stitch something if you want it to look ready to wear. But at the same time, just take some of it. Don't don't try and um, beat yourself up about some of it because they have special machines that do it. And those machines have changed over the years. So um, they have changed also what is acceptable and ready to wear. Like there's a lot of stuff in ready to wear sewing techniques now that would have never been acceptable like 30 years ago. That would have been like cutting too many corners in a lot of people's uh, opinion. And um, it's the same with, um, you know, the machines. Like the, the fact that there's more consumerism and more people buying clothing has created um you know the need for more automated machines and sometimes you can't really do the exact same thing with an automated machine that a human can do so they've changed some of the sewing techniques after the way <laughs> well i know brooke that's what happens right it looks when you when when i see it from this side when i'm sewing it on this side it looks really weird like Sewing a flat felt seam looks wrong. I don't know how else to put it. It looks like, um, yeah, I don't know how to put it. Like, I, I don't know how to put it because this seam looks naked to me. And I don't know why that term comes to mind. It just looks wrong. But then when I see it on this side, it just looks like I finished the whole seam. You know, like it looks exactly how it would. It's like I'm doing it in the reverse order. You know what I mean? I have a feeling these are not symmetrical, but I hope they are. All right, there we go. Oh, there's one of those creases. Oh, that's a bad one. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> yeah, Carol, I know. It's a little easier than we thought, huh? Let's look at his pants. Let's look at these. I feel like Le these, are, these are Levi's. Yeah, these are flat fill. Yeah. But see how this looks rolled under and that looks rolled under? And see how mine is a seam and rolled under on only on one side. So that's what I'm talking about. This kind of sewing is probably, uh, has a machine with a double folder on it and it's folding it both ways and then stitching it down at the same time. I've seen, a, I've seen probably more automated machines than you guys have. So it may seem like a lot, but I actually haven't seen like one just, I've seen like barely the number of automated machines that are out there in the world. So I'm not an expert in it. I have been to like trade shows, like one called Bobbin, um, which is where you go to buy that kind of machinery. And um, it's incredible. Like I saw stuff that just blew my mind there. Okay, I need to do the center back seam. And I don't wanna do a flat pal seam. <laughs> But see, I didn't search my, uh, I just didn't search these pants. And, oh, I don't need to search this because that's the, uh, that is a flat belt scene. I did plan on doing the flat belt on um, the back rise, but this thickness right here makes me a little bit nervous. I know. Yeah, exactly, Brooke. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought when I saw that. It's better than 
the bottom like he, he really hates it when it's like down the center of his leg with those creases because it's true it's like it looks distressed there and it looks like he didn't iron his pants when they're ironing you just see that crease line it's so annoying I think I might want to serge this and then um, sew this the regular way and top stitch it because I'm not sure I have the skills to flat fell this area right here. So just a second, I'm going to serge this, this rise right here. I'll be right back. You guys entertain yourselves. <laughs> So let's just sew that the traditional way. So I'm going to um, sew it at a 5 8 inch seam and then double needle top stitch it. I would normally probably switch this back to navy blue. I'm going to see if I'm actually going to do a little test seam and pull it apart and see if I'm going to see that yellow thread and I would so I'm going to switch that to blue thread we don't want our um, yellow thread showing through the seam that wouldn't be good I can tell what thread's been in my denim. It already has like a little bit of a blue hue to it, you know? No, 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 don't come out, don't come out. The stuff is so sturdy that when I um, clip it off the top, it goes and that <laughs> like it spins. And I don't want it to come out of the top of my thread carriage because that's really hard to thread because I have to do it from back to front. I thought it was going to be really hard to thread the needle with that yellow stuff, but I forgot. It's so nice and stiff. It just pokes through. So great. All right. Once I do this, um, I'm actually going to do the center front seam at the same time while I got the blue thread on there. Where I'm going to do the, um, the fly. Ooh, my stitching looks pretty darn good. Look at that. Let's get rid of this thread right here. See? Nice. That was lucky. I forgot to think about that. I'm actually going to back tack right there because I feel like that that's a point of stress when you have those really thick seams because it may not be pulling as a point of stress, but it will be rubbing against like his back, you know, right there on his spine. And, um, or you know sitting in chairs and things like that because that thicker seam will rub against the thread wear it out when you see blowouts in jeans it's not because they're too tight usually it's just friction it's not because they're too small or too tight it's just the friction <clears throat> it's pretty good when I go to top stitch it, I might be able to kind of like push this up a little bit and get that to line up a little bit even nicer. So I'm going to do my uh, fly seam right now at the bottom here. And so here's one of the modifications I did. I trimmed off the fly on one side, the fly facing. And I'll show you why in a minute. But I definitely want <clears throat> to remember to top stitch the edge of my fly. Okay, I think I go right to here. 
I'm gonna double stitch it. <laughs> It'll be top stitched too with the gold, which will reinforce it as well. This is the only drag about jeans. If you have two machines, which a lot of people do because sometimes they have one that does one stitch they like better than another, set one up for your top stitching and one for the construction and that way you won't have to switch between two machines while you're sewing. I have two industrials, but my other one has a binding attachment on it. Boy, I probably won't even need that soon. So maybe I would take the binding attachment off and have two. Ooh. It's pretty exciting. Oh, what did I do there? Did you see that? Oh my goodness, there we go. It's like sewing with wire. <laughs> this thread's so boardy. And I already sew with pretty heavy duty thread most of the time. All right, um, let's look at his pants. Let's see, they top stitch it on this side right here. That actually might help with the alignment just by pushing it this way because it'll give it the optical illusion of being um, lined up there. No need to back tack. It'll just uh, create an opportunity for it to sneak out of the seam. I'm centering my presser foot over the seam. That's where I want it. There's no rule. And I'm going to start at the top again and do it. And then I just line up my presser foot with that stitching. And I'm actually looking right here. Looking right, like right here. I'm not looking at anything over here. I'm just looking at where I want this presser foot to go. Does that make sense? to get my stitching nice and parallel. <clears throat> but I've talked about this a lot in past videos. If you are doing these on home machines, and this is why having two machines also would be nice, you can get a jeans top stitching double needle. I have one somewhere I can show you what they kind of look like. Um, and you can do two perfect rows of parallel stitching. It is gorgeous. It would look way better than this. This looks straight to you, but probably, I mean, it doesn't look that, <laughs> it looks okay. Um, there's just nothing like doing it with the double needle. It's amazing. And you don't need anything special except the fact that the hole right here that your needle goes into through your throat plate needs to be bigger. So um, if you're using a machine that has a zigzag capability then you most likely do have that hole down there unless you've switched out your throat plate for specialized sewing so um, you can use that double needle to create the um, double needle top stitching it uses one bobbin and then it looks it almost looks like uh, overlock surging on the bottom do not use that needle to um, in place of surging if you don't have a serger it doesn't work the same because it's this a serger is a um there's no bobbin and so it's a chain stitch that's why it has the stretch and so if you are using um any like a machine like this that's a lock stitch machine when you have a bobbin there are machines that imitate serging and do a stretch stitch and do fake cover stitching um but in that work but if you are trying to use a double needle um like a top stitching double needle in place of surging, they will pop. So just so you guys know that. And I and I did try that once because I was like, oh, I just want it to look like it. And um, when I used to do prototyping for the pattern drafting and design I did for my clients, the pattern, the prototypes had to look exactly the way a factory would sew them. Um, and so sometimes I would go to great lengths to make it look that way, um, but I couldn't fake it. Like there. They can actually use your sample also for any tension, stitches per inch, um, any of that as well. So you have to be careful what you submit to the factory because you may get exactly what you gave them and they have every right to be like, yeah, that's what you gave me. So, and I've seen that many times. So it's, uh, there are things to do to make your things look ready to wear, but sometimes they're not worth it. You should do what works best for the garment. I, that's my little lecture today. <laughs> 
Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of gadgets out there. All right, so let's do the fly. I'm just gonna pretend like it's no big deal. It is, right? Oh, I have my pockets still too. Ooh. I'll do my pockets after since I already switched back to the gold thread. I just switched back to gold thread. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to clip this. This is not in the instructions and I'm going to show you why. I've been trying to remember why this is possible and this, this is it. It's the clip with better scissors that actually have a tip. <laughs> the reason I'm doing that is because I want my jeans to look pretty, pro not professional, but at least as um, run of the mill as possible. And so I need a top stitching edge on this side. And to be able to do that, um, I'm gonna top stitch the pants, but I need the seam allowances to split when it gets to there because I want this piece right here to stay out of the way. So let's see, I think this one, yeah, it gets folded on this one and this one gets folded on this one's wider one. So at this notch, I'm going to push this out of the way, but I, I still want my both layers of my seam allowance to get caught in this double needle top stitch. I, I could be making a mistake here, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm pretty sure this is how this works like this. I'm gonna double check the directions. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this way of sewing a fly. It's almost like you're sewing it, like you press all the pieces in the way that you want it to look when it's done, and then you stitch it down that way. And so rather than doing seams and then um, ending up with it that way, I, I don't know how else to say that. So the um, fronts have two notches at the top. See that? Can you see that? Two notches. One of them, you use this notch. And that's why I just trimmed all that off. It's unnecessary. It was getting in my way. It was extra fabric underneath. It didn't like the way it looked. And then the other one, the right front is this one closest to the curved fly facing. And then this one's the one that's gonna be sewn with it pressed like this. And see, this is my problem also, is that it dips down. Don't like that. So my, I really want it to line up like this, but it doesn't. So, I'm hoping this is gonna work. I could be wrong, but um, I want this top stitching like this. I want this to look like that right there. It is pretty much how all jeans have, and they and if you don't have it, it looks kind of naked at home. So, so I'm gonna do my second layer, second row, and I'm gonna just stop right there, like that. I'm I'm kind of guessing. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do it exactly how she has it for the most part, but I couldn't get the look I wanted by doing it that way. When this is gone, that'll look a little straighter. Okay, so now we have, let's get my backs out of the way here. Where is my fly? Okay, so my other change I made, this is the fly shield pattern that comes with the pattern. And when I used that, so then you fold this in half like this, if you were to follow the instructions, you uh, do this. You can finish this edge any way you like. You can serge it. You can sew it right sides together, pull it right side out and um, edge stitch it or iron it. You can bind it, but this is how you sew it. You sew it like this with the curve on this side. And I don't know why, it just, it just looked weird on the inside to me. So I straightened mine out. That's the only difference. So I just squared it off at the bottom. So mine looks a little different. So let's see, I'm 
pretty sure the next step, so this edge would be folded back right at that notch. And actually I need to stitch this zipper down. I'm gonna see where my zipper stop's gonna end up. I want it to be high enough to where, um, this is what I like about the other pattern method, is that you know where this is gonna be at. And I, cause I don't want it to get caught when I do that curve stitching at the very end. I don't want this to get underneath that stitching. So I'm actually gonna lay this out and see. So if this were stitched to this, if I, let's say I line it up like that, okay? I'm not sure that's where I want it to be. Let's line it up like at the bottom there. Get rid of my serging, lock those stitches up a little tighter. I hate serging stitches. It's so messy sometimes, you know? It's like the irony of serging. It's supposed to make it look nice and neat and then it makes it look messy sometimes. Okay, so if that was like that, and then um, I press this back and I line that up and I stitched it like that. That's pretty high. And then this goes on here. And um, you, you like, let's see, go like this. That goes right next to the zipper. And then this goes, lines up over there like that. And then I'm going to top stitch, I'm going to stitch that to the zipper and then I'm going to top stitch around. I'm just thinking out loud. It's pretty low down. So I can actually drop this a little bit like that. So I'm going to do, because I also want to make sure I get past the teeth up there in the waistband seam. So let's try this. Let's lay it all out and see. All right. So we've sewn that to there. We line it up. And we sew this to the zipper edge right here. This gets lined up quarter inch past like that. I stitched my curve. And do I miss my zipper stop? Not really. So let's raise it up just a tiny bit. And then I think I'm good. All right. All right. Now I kind of want to stitch this first. You should. <laughs> but um, because I have my gold top stitching on, I might just do this at one time. This whole thing right here. I don't have a zipper foot. Um, I do kind of. It's not like your zipper foot. Um, and so I... Um, gonna see if I can sew it without pulling out my zipper foot. This is a pretty narrow zipper tape. So I feel like I don't, not sure I can get past it. Let me see here. Now I'm gonna zip up my zipper. Oh, so tight. Actually, I'm gonna go down a little bit further. I don't like that my jeans are pulling down here either. Okay. Pull my zipper past that. I gotta get it under my preservative. There we go. I think this is gonna be work because the denim is thick enough. It's allowing me to stitch onto the zipper without having the zipper foot because the denim is keeping my presser foot high enough that's sitting on top of the teeth and onto the denim edge there. See, what I like about this method is that you see how it's going to look when you're done, like when you're sewing. So there we go. So now this would sit like that. Oh, my stitching, it could be better, you guys. I feel it. 
Nothing like sewing a pattern for the first time for someone you haven't sewn for in a really long time. Eek! <laughs> okay, so um, now I'm going to stitch this zipper to this fly facing here. And um, then we pull this away and stitch the circle. We pull the fly shield away and stitch the circle. The, the circle, the curve. I'm just gonna put one more pin here. You overlap this by about a quarter of an inch. This, that way, past that stitched edge. I want that to be up high, but I don't want it to buckle. Just like that. And um, I may have to pull those out in a second because my pins are really long, partly. All right. So now let's look at it. Let me try and so do this so you guys can tell what I'm doing. So that's the inside of my jeans right now. Now see, my serger cannot catch that. Can you guys' serger do those little curves there? Like I've used sergers for years and they can never do that that inverted corner, you know, no matter how hard I try. All right, so this is what I'm looking at right now. So now I need to stitch this zipper to this piece here. I kind of want to take out those pins now. So I'm going to put in new pins right here to kind of make sure that these, I'm going to pin them the, the wrong way too, like along the zipper so that they stay out of the way. Just like this. Making sure it all looks, you know, flat and relaxed. Let's get rid of these two. Okay, now I get that this out of the way, the pant out of the way, everything out of the way. This is gonna be a little harder for me to get close to that zipper because I don't have the like thickness of the denim on this side of my presser foot like I did the other time. So I have to get as close to that zipper as possible another way. So now I'm going to open up my zipper. There we go. Okay. Let's see how I did. Looking okay. All right, so now we want to do our curve on the fly. Isn't this funny this way? I mean, if you've seen me sew the other style um, zipper fly, it's almost like we're going in reverse order, complete reverse order. Now you want to get all of this side of the pant out of the way because you just are sewing down this fly shield and see this is what I didn't like. So if I cut these out again I'd probably fold that pattern piece back on itself and then cut across the waist and kind of fill in that extra or tape it back because mine's now cut already. Hopefully that'll get caught into the waist seam. So um, I'm going to, I just want to look at my curve here. See where it's at. Let's look at it this way because the pants are pulling. I want to see, I'm going to feel in here where the curve is. I'm kind of curious where it goes uh, in relation to my original top stitch since I was kind of like guessing where that was going to end because I would like it to kind of sync up with that right there but I have a feeling like look at there's my there's my zip stop. I don't really like the way this looks you guys but I'm gonna I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna try and pull this over a little bit more. I'm going to sew right here around the curve. Alrighty. 
See that? What could I do to get rid of that? Let's see. I don't like that this is peeking out there. It'll end up becoming a focal point. It'll catch people's eye and they'll look there. And I hope people look in there. <laughs> right? Am I right? Okay. Doing blue thread would have been helpful. I am going to, I'm going to pin this down. I may end up stitching up right there, up right here. Let's see, here's my zipper stop right there and closing that up, like forcing it over just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to pull the fly shield out of the way. This is, I'm trying not to nerd out on you guys right now. I kind of want to know what it would take to get rid of that. But I, I don't have like spare extra anything right now to like just sit here and try and experiment on it. What is this big old chunk under there? It's just the, the stitching. Okay. So yeah, it's folding that back. It's pretty tricky. All right. So I'm going to push this right there. And I'm going to try and get this curve without any warping or anything fly shields out of the way but is my zipper stop we'll see right all right i'm gonna walk my foot and hope i'm getting past my zipper foot okay i'm past Ooh, I think I just had a, a stitch a different length than the others. I could feel it. Okay, I have another issue now that that just created. Let's see how it looks. It looks home sewn. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, that's the important stuff, right? Okay, so from here to there, that wasn't, that's not the same uh, distance right there. So let's take that out. I'm going to take it out like right to here because I can put a, a like back tack there, like a fake bar tack and kind of hide that start and stop. That way I don't have to like hazard this area again. <laughs> yeah, haven't we talked about that before, Nancy, where um, like remember that like menswear, um, there was like this trend in like the 90s. Yeah, I could totally draw a chalk mark, Brooke. Um, my problem with the chalk is that I kind of have to wash it out to be gone. And I don't really want that mark on there right now. I might I might put it on there. I was so concerned with the bottom that um, I just, I, sh I didn't pay as much attention at the top. But um, this won't take me long to take out. But yeah, there was like this menswear phase where they were putting like um a tag right here do you guys remember that it was awful i did not like it i think it was in the 90s when more was better or so they thought I'm at least going to draw a chalk mark at the top so that I have like a guide to where I'm shooting for. Let's see, what time is it? Okay. I'll probably do my front pockets and then we'll do the rest of it on um, Saturday and that will leave the flat felt seam on the inner thigh. 
<clears throat> the out seams and the waistband. The other modification I'm doing, which is no big deal, is I'm not gonna do lining fabric for the inside waistband. I'm gonna do denim on both. <clears throat> One of my pet peeves with also with denim jeans, like home sewn ones really, like with my own experience, is that I don't like the waistband to get crumpled, you know? So I think this time I'm gonna sew down. I'm gonna sew down from where I want so let's look at that. Let's just raise this up here like this. And I think that that right there would be my guide. What do you guys think? This is not a stitching guide, by the way. It is a belt loop guide. I think that could work, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, right, Nancy? I know. There's just so much. <clears throat> we really survived a lot with fashion in the 80s. <laughs> Veteran survivors. <laughs> I'm being careful here. Now I'm kind of looking over here, just making sure I stay parallel. Denim is not as forgiving with your stitching as you would think. You can definitely see where you've stitched. Okay, not my favorite fly. Okay, but now I can do my other row next to it and in case my um, original stitching or maybe I'll just um, continue it right there. I don't wanna accidentally, let's see, where is that at? Let's poke a pin through. This right here is right there. I don't want to accidentally um, stitch this going that way. Let's see, I got one stitch there. So let's get rid of that. God, this is, I, it would take me some practice to get this kind of fly facing correct. It's not the end of the world if the bottom of your fly shield is caught in there because it does, um, it doesn't need to get out of the way when you're using it. See? If you notice, like when you when you undo your zip, when you undo your pants, it's almost like at the bottom, it's like a pocket, you know? It's like your hand kind of stops right there. And so this, this fly shield does get tacked over to the underneath the zipper anyway. So maybe I'll just include that as a part of this right now. And then this way I don't have to worry about the weird thickness I was getting. I want to see my, I, I think I can go one, one ooh, I don't want to go that far though. See, it's kind of crooked though. Eek, you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not okay. <laughs> not my smoothest sewing experience, is it? I think I'm going to start and go all the way up. This is risky. I just want a nice continuous line, and I don't want there to be a focal point there right <laughs> i think i've seen ripped more today than i have in a while <laughs> but I, gosh i just really like denim jeans to look right you know and they don't really take that long to put together so why not take that time to get it right they don't need to be perfect you know that about me i don't really strive for what people consider perfect 
I like, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I would put what I like. There are certain things you can overlook. I think it's learning what you don't mind um, look, looking at, first of all. And I think as a sewist, you tend to look at things differently than non-sewists. You know what I mean? This is such a short little distance, but such an important part of the pants. I hate it when the stitching gets messy like that. You don't want to snag your twill weave. There we go, there's some of it right there. Let's see if we can see it underneath there too. can always leave a little bit of this and just stitch on top of it, but I think I can get it all. I don't want these little cut fibers sticking straight up because you can't get those, you can't get rid of that, you know, and it'll look messy. See, there we go. Not the twill. There we go. I think I got it all. Not bad, not bad, right? Okay, there's my um, first pass. Let's see there. Where is it? Sometimes it's safer to take out your stitching on the wrong side, that way you don't hurt the top. There we go, it's all gone. I could also leave it without. It doesn't actually have to have those two stitching lines. Maybe what I do is just put a second one here what do you guys think? This just this fly just doesn't look like they usually do. I don't know. Am I being too over analytical? I don't think so. I'm gonna do my second curve first and see how I think what I think afterward. Making sure I'm not catching anything I don't want to catch under there. I wish they all wouldn't roll around like that. I'm just going to walk it around. I really want a parallel look. This is when that like home, double needle home needle would be really nice. I wonder if I can get my fly shield now to go under there. I don't want my machine to accidentally cut the thread. It will. If I push too hard on my heel, it'll like um, cut the thread, to kick it out. I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> I'd be kind of mad. But I can tell I have a little fold in my uh, fly shield. So maybe I'll go a little bit further. I know I can't get all the way there without catching my fly shield in there. I should have moved it over. I'm going to go back a stitch. That might do it. I tried to lift my brush with my hand. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> Can we do something else now? I don't know. Why doesn't it look right to me? <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> this is one of those moments. I mean, most of this is is kind of low on the rise. Oh, I wanted to tell you that. Like, um, she calls the seat 
seam, the uh, the rise seam, the seat seam, just so you guys know, I kind of hung up on that. That could just be me though. Maybe that's um, common in home sewing terminology. Um, she sewed to, said to sew the seat seam, um, and she meant this right here, which is the front rise. And seat, I always think is the back, and the back rise, okay? All right. I think I'm gonna put a, uh, another bar tack right there. And I did put the fly shield underneath it. I'm gonna put another one right here, just like that. Pull that thread. It's like, it's like the curve is too um, perfect. You know what I mean? It's like, I think it looks too round. I don't know how else to describe that. But I think I'm gonna keep one row of stitching here. I think that looks better with just one. What do you guys think? I could do the two rows though. I could just start here and go down or start here. Should we look at the regular den denim jeans? I don't need to do what they do, but. Oh, look at that, they go way up there. Bar tech there. Let's look at the inside. All I know is that once they're washed a few times, they'll look like they were always supposed to be like that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the front pockets. I can always dink around with that a little bit on Saturday before I do the um, inseam. Maybe once I don't look at it um, this closely for this long, it will look more, more how I want it to. So I'm gonna switch to blue thread. Don't come unthreaded, thank you. And then um, put my pockets in. I may have to switch to um, cream thread for my pocket. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. I, I promise there's a garbage can right there. Would you, would you Nancy? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that can be a double-edged sword though, you know? Um, because if you were to pull out every different brand of jeans in your closet, yours, and anybody else that lives with you, you would notice that they're all kind of different. So, you know, it's kind of tricky. Kind of tricky. All right, so her uh, directions have you clean finish this edge here. I decided to serge it. I like it really flat, that's why. You can turn this under and top stitch it down. You um, can serge it like this, zigzag it. It's not gonna show. I like it when I put my hand in my pocket that it's nice and smooth and there's not a bump there, and so that's why I go for the serged edge. But I do want my pockets to um, show the, the right side to show um, on the inside of the pants, not on the inside of the pocket. So for all intents and purposes, this is the right side of my pocket. It's like the part my hand is going to. So it's gonna be like that. And so when he's wearing them, you, you'll see in the inside of the pants and they're inside out, you'll see that. But no one will know, just him. I'm sure he's expecting me to do something like that. He knows me. I used to be like when I, when I got back into sewing um, and was really had the time to work on it because I worked at a fabric store. I was out of the garment industry taking a break and really got into like some other sewing techniques. Um, I'm gonna do this. I, um, I got into silk ribbon embroidery. <laughs> I know, me, I hate hand sewing, but I love that way that looks. And, um, that's what I used to put in his shirts. Is I was always I would always put silk ribbon flowers at the like back of the collar stand. So yeah, yeah, the bar tacks are kind of in the same place, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Um, yeah, because that's high stress area. So so close to that edge there. It feels weird to be stitching this on the on the wrong side. Let's make sure that that's not going to, oh, it is. 
That's so weird. You know what it is? I think it's because she has a half inch seam allowance there. That's probably what it is for to turn it under. And I'm not going to do that. So I'll show you my workaround without having to research that edge. Sorry, I have to take this out though. Um, at least it's a good opportunity for you to see how I hold my seam ripper. <laughs> I hold it like this so that you can, your thumb is free like this. And um, it was working for this crazy intense woman. <laughs> um, not crazy intense about sewing, just crazy intense about a few other things in her, uh, in the world uh, that I did not agree with. Um, <clears throat> But she wouldn't let me seam rip unless I held the seam ripper like this. They didn't have clover seam rippers back then like this. Um, they were the little tiny blue ones that we probably all know and have used lots of, you know. I, I have a couple of those. I like those too, but they're, I really like the, the way um, that this is flat so it can't roll off my table. A lot of those ergonomic seam rippers, they just roll right off your table. Um, and... Um, I don't, you don't need ergonomics with a seam ripper per se, because it's not something you're holding on to for eight hours a day. It's just something to note. So get the one you like. Um, I like those little blue ones because I feel like they do stay pretty sharp, but um, I don't like how small they are. I always have to put the cap on them and that works, but I really like this wider end here for me. You have more control over it. So I'm holding it like this and um, this I hardly ever change I maybe get a new seam ripper every year like it stays sharp oh I think a lot of people will hold it like this you know or just like this you know they don't really seat it in their hand like this with their thumb free I can't even remember how to do it I see um, other people hold it that way and there's nothing wrong with it. You do what works for you. It took me a while to get used to holding it this way. All right, so um, I'm just going to move this up slightly like this. And I'm gonna trim off that, um, this makes me a little nervous. Ah. Should I just turn under that edge? Maybe I'll just turn under that edge. What I'll do is I'll sew a stitching line as a cheater first. My husband's not going to be as concerned with the bulk right there than, as I would be. There's also no coin pocket, by the way, on these jeans, on this jean pattern. They're not traditional jeans. It's more like a canvas work pant. I almost added one, but... I'm gonna pull it a little bit. I'll use the bobbin so I can see it. A little hard on the denim. Should have probably lengthened my stitch, you know. But I don't wanna to forget to put it back either. Just like I forgot to do it for this. <laughs> Don't really have to do this. It's a little bit overkill, but if you really want a nice curve, it's inside your pocket, you guys. You don't have to worry about it. I can't even get down there. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And I did the other one first, of course. All right, so I'm just gonna fold it along that um, that stitch line. First, I'm gonna actually pin this where I want it to stay lined up there. So I serge these, like if I were sewing these on my own, I would serge the whole side seam probably all at once unless I thought it was gonna be kind of bulky. But because I'm here with you and I don't wanna like leave the camera and go back and forth to my serger over and over and I don't have the serger like right here, which would be like, I in a home sewing situation, that's what I would want. I would my serger right here and I would just turn to it, right? Um, I do these layers individually. It is a little less bulky in some ways, but it adds another kind of bulk because the serger does add bulk. So I'm gonna look at this fold here. I should say, I actually made these pockets narrower. That's why they're not folding perfectly. I made them narrower this way and shorter. Let me show you the original pocket. See if I can find it. 
I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> so these pockets were two inches wider and I think they were about an, about this much longer. They're huge. So um, he doesn't really need that because they're not work pants. I'm thinking that even folding this, that mount isn't gonna help that issue right there. I probably need to trim this down. So I'll probably will surge this, you guys, because I don't want to, um, I wanna have that bulk there when it's folding right there. So let's see where it needs to be. Let's do that. Look at all that right there. I need to get rid of a lot. And I'm just going to take it off on this edge. I'm gonna leave this the same. I'm gonna leave this the same, okay? So I'm gonna trim like an inch off. Let's see, um, let's make sure my pocket's going to still cover that. So if I trim off an inch and it goes to there, this is my seam allowance. This is my seam, right? And this is a half inch seam. The pocket's actually gonna end up right there. The, the like finished pocket opening, right? So I don't really wanna trim off too much more than that. So yeah, I'll be back. Just take a second. why I could not get that to fit there because I made the pocket a lot smaller they looked huge and like I said my husband's not a big guy so if I would have used those pockets I feel like they would have come down to his mid thigh and I know I just know him that you know that's kind of low um you know, if he would have put stuff in his pockets, it would have been sitting down there so low and it would have been uncomfortable when he sat down. Most of the time when you put things in your pockets, they kind of sit in the crook of your hip joint, you know, like your joint where you are sitting and um, not up on your thigh. That would be too taut right there. Not probably for a guy. Guys don't have thighs like a woman does, but um, I just, I just kind of know him. It would be a little out of the ordinary, you know. I don't want to have to explain. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Now I'm just going to go back to my original plan of just cinching them down. Back on track. All right. Let's get rid of my gathering stitch there. I'm not gonna pull it out, no need. Just didn't want it to be like pulling up there. I don't like interrupting my surging like that, not ideal. These are starting to feel like a muslin. <laughs> All right, let's put our um, pocket seams and that already looks better to me. What do you guys think? Like just taking a break from looking at it. All right, so I don't wanna get my pockets confused. So let's see, that's how I want it to be. So this is my right side of my fabric. The wrong side of my pocket lining is the right side of my fabric. So just, that's a personal preference. You can um, put your lining right side on the inside of the pocket or you can put it on the outside of the pocket so half inch seam oh wait i think it's actually five eighths i'm gonna do half inch it's a pocket opening i think this pocket opening is also a little bit um like shallower this way so if you do add a coin pocket you're going to kind of have to accommodate it fitting there it looks big enough when i look at it here but when i held it up to his pants kind of comparing it did look a little bit um higher. Nothing wrong with that. So I clipped the curve and um, 
I really, I probably will iron this, really want to make sure that all my pocket lining sits inside there so that none of it creeps out to the outside. I feel like this is an amateur thing that you see in sewing sometimes is when you can see someone's pocket lining and my, myself included, pocket, pe peeking out right here, right? Because I'm not using something that matches color wise. So I'm probably going to iron that. Uh, ed, uh, under stitching would work as well, but I'm also going to top stitch this with the gold thread. So we could under stitch it right now, but then my under stitching would show the blue thread. Not a problem. That that you do sometimes see that on the insides of these pockets. Let's see what they have. They have the gold. They have double stitching on the gold. So this isn't quite a. This is a very dusty gold. So um. I could uh, switch the cream and then understitch it, but I'm just going to press it really well and then stitch it down. Let's do our other pocket. All right. So you guys, next week is our sew along. Are you guys gonna participate, I hope? Pretty excited. No zipper fly there, yo. <laughs> we are um, on Thursday. So you'll notice if you look at that schedule, which I, I, I don't know if you guys have, but because um, I've scheduled out all my streams through to when I go to a show. So the sew along is the last project I'm going to do with you guys um, probably through February. So Next week, we have two streams. Thursday, we're going to talk about um, cutting them out, fit, any alterations that you want to make. Um, yay. Um, so we can talk about pattern alterations next week. And um, I saw, is it, it, Ida, is it you? That's, um, if you're still here, I'm not sure. So, one of you is working on the sizing issues, or maybe it's Christy. No, I think it's Ida. Um, Oh, you see, I'm wearing my Cheyenne tunic. <laughs> it's really long on me. Um, so I, what I would recommend if you have enough denim fabric is to cut out the front and back waist and just sew it to the side seam and sew it up the top. And it's, it would take you just five minutes, I promise, and pull it on over your hips and let it sit on your waist. But then also um, maybe wear a pair of pants that have the same front rise, finished front rise or similar to the Mountain View pull on pants so that you know where that that band is going to sit on you because you can pull it and push it wherever you want. But if it's not attached to the pants, it may be um, lower or higher, right? Yeah, that's fine, Carol. So Carol, actually, it's going to be much easier. <laughs> awesome, Brooke. Um, so the... Um, the way we're going to do those, the sew along is Thursday, we're going to just talk about any fit issues that we're worried about. Maybe this will just end up being a muslin for some of you, and that's totally fine. Um, and then Saturday, we will sew the first little bit, and then we won't sew again together on that until the following Saturday. So there's a week between the sewing steps that we're going to do, and I've, I've like stretched it to three weeks it's just one size on its way from Patternsy. Oh, nice. Patternsy does do that, Nancy. That's great. Yeah, so apparently, you guys, if you did get your um, printing done at pdfplotting.com, um, that whole layer thing I pointed out to you guys, they don't do that. Yeah, exactly, Melon. So um, she got all of the sizes. So, you know, it's kind of a jumble of sizes, you know. So Patternsy does do one size. You can do the layers. Not all patterns are set up for that. Oh, nice, Melin. Um, I definitely want to make another one. This this fabric's super see-through. You see, it's like, you can see my pants. I had to wear a tank top. <laughs> Put my belt all the way to the side because the <laughs> thing's so long. <laughs> the tab is so long. Um, so um, let's see. So like I'm saying, yeah, you could, Brooke, but the problem with canvas is that it probably doesn't have the stretch. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll just know that they're going to fit even better, you know? 
So they might be a little tight and that's okay. You want, you want negative ease with stretch. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Nancy. <laughs> I may be there with you. If I had time, I'd probably sew up a whole pair just beforehand so I know what I'm getting myself into with you guys and can answer any questions. But I think like the, the point I'm trying to make about where that waistband sits on you is um, making sure that you're not pulling it up too high because they're like, oh, this fits really good. But if you have it too uh, higher because you're narrower up high and it's snug, um, that's not where it's going to sit, right? So you got to make sure that the um, depth of the rise is the same as where you want it to put. <laughs> that's awesome, Nancy. Oh, you had double yard. Oh, nice, Carol. Wow, that's awesome. Um, I'm about to sneeze. I've been fighting it for a while now. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that I'm going to have another pair of jeans for my trip because, you guys, all I wear is this pair of gingers and my pair that are a little too big. They're actually kind of a lot too big. So I kind of want to try and squeeze in sewing another pair of pants plus those. Um, I'm just starting to, I'm just a little too big for most of the jeans in my closet nowadays. So I'm really liking these, you know, <laughs> these are really comfortable. Let me iron these really quick. We'll finish these up so I can, we can get going. You can turn, you guys can join me while I iron. You can look through my, uh, my thread and my microphone there. Well, the cutting scares you the most, Nancy? Yeah, I can see because it's committing, right, to the, um, that's why I really suggest if you have enough, which most likely you do, cut at least the waistband. If you have like um, enough fabric for your pants plus maybe half of the pants, cut out the waistband plus the top part of the pants. Just throw them together. You don't have to do the all the sewing techniques. You don't have to do all the pockets. You don't have to do all of that. In fact, if you can, you know, like take it, take the pocket, and maybe we can we can maybe go over this on Thursday. Remind me about this, right? So take your pocket, tape it onto the pant pattern like this, you know, and cut out the pant all in one piece there, so that you don't have to worry about that pocket, right? And then um sew up like don't you don't do the fly or anything just sew the seam together right there and then um same with the back you don't have to do the pockets um you can tape the yoke is there a yoke on those i'm pretty sure there's a yoke oh and it has the back seam that's the other thing i want to look at getting rid of that back seam for some of us who don't want it um and i think it was nancy that had that really great idea of or maybe it's christy that had the idea of just top stitching it in matching thread so it's not as noticeable if you're not interested in that um, back leg seam so then um, then cut out your front that's solid and your back that's solid, you know, like one piece and one piece or, you know, two, one and two, one and one, <laughs> two pieces for the front and then the waistband and, try, and then pull them on. You'll feel so much better just doing that. It may be a little bit of extra work, but wouldn't that be better than being afraid? Like being afraid is the pits, you know? So I would totally recommend, um, cutting that out as a muslin and you know if you want I will do that I will um I'm gonna write it down I always promise you guys things and I forget that was Christy right Nancy okay yeah so I'm going to sew a muslin of the mountain view and I'm going to show you what I mean so you guys can wait to cut yours out you can easily catch up for the sewing 
And even if you are doing the muslin, it's something, right? You're still sewing along with us. And I think that that's really valuable. I do muslins too, you know? I did muslins for this, you know? So um, that way, like taking out some of those fears are is by answering some of the questions. And then that way, you know, like, okay, these are actually going to turn out pretty good, you know? And they're only going to be even better once you're cutting them and sewing them the way the pattern has all the details. You can leave all those details and not tape them together and just sew up a muslin really quick. It doesn't have to be serged seams. It doesn't have to be finished seams. It's just a muslin. But And if you don't want to waste the fabric, think of it this way. If you make the whole pair of pants and they don't fit, you've wasted all that fabric. It's better to waste a half a yard of fabric than all of it, right? We don't do this because it's cheaper. <laughs> we don't do this because it's more economical in fabric and everything. So, but the thing is, look at this as knowledge to build on. Once you've made these, you'll have that as like, okay, these aren't perfect. But all I have to do is this and this to the next pair and then they're going to fit well. And I know just saying that is really like cliche and of course you know that, but it really is true because, you know, it's just like anything you do. The next time you do it, whether it's a recipe or sewing, you do it a little bit differently. All right. Um, I just need to sew a little bit. Okay, I don't want that to be at a weird angle right there. So my blue um, bobbin thread is going to show inside the pocket there, but if I did cream, the cream would probably show on the top in between each of the yellow stitches. So that's why I don't I'll do a cream bobbin. It's so hard to keep the same width around those curves, isn't it? It isn't. <laughs> Just don't look. <laughs> I should have done the brown thread. <laughs> this is when your little double needle is going to be so nice. I honestly think it's because the tension is just not quite right using this really heavy thread on top and the navy on the bottom. But I'll tell you a secret. Once this sits against the blue background of the pocket facing, it's going to look better. It's going to look more even. Because you won't see the edge. <laughs> see? <laughs> That's my trick. See, because when you don't see the... Um, this edge right here, like against white, it looks better, doesn't it? What do you guys think? All right, so let's finish up this pocket at the bottom. So I could do this a couple ways. I could just sew across the bottom there. Um, but I think I'm going to do a French seam because I like the way that looks better than searching. So I will... Um, Switch this to cream thread, do my French seam there, and then we are done for the day. And I really hope that anybody new here will consider like chatting and creating that account so that you can because we really love chatting with you guys. And consider doing the uh, sew along with us. We're doing the Mountain View Pull On Jeans by Itch to Stitch Design. No fly. They are literally pull on jeans and they look amazing. Every time I see them on people in the hashtag, they look really great. So yeah, you guys can do that too. Like surf the hashtag. I'm too critical of myself. Gosh, I'm not usually uh, accused of that. I mean, yeah, I do a little bit of that, but I feel like, um, I don't know, maybe it looks better on camera to you guys. <laughs>
It looks, it looks good. It looks good. I'm happy with it. I really am. And like I said, you know, like when I haven't looked at it for a couple days, I'm trying to keep the pocket fabric a surprise for my husband. I don't think he's, I know he has meetings today. I don't think he'd watch anyway. I know he has before. I didn't know he was doing that. All right. So let's see wrong sides together, then right sides. Right, right, right. I may be a little critical, but I still soldier on, right? I'm still doing it. <laughs> I'm not that critical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, Nancy? Exactly. It'll look a lot better. So I didn't really need to serge the edges of this, but I just wanted to know. I, I wanted to give myself options just in case I didn't want to use a French seam. I love this fabric. Like, this fabric is... Um, cloud nine organic cotton um it's very tightly woven it has a really nice hand to it love using it I haven't used their fabrics in our line for a little while we used it recently but i don't think what that was for was it maybe the a binding that we used can't remember look at that it looks so nice that looks nice i like that Okay, so wrong sides together. The surging adds a little bit of extra bulk, which I'm not thrilled with, but um, whatever, you know, no big deal. Not make or break. It would be more important if this was a lightweight fabric, the jeans wear lightweight fabric, not denim, and your pockets would show through. So that's another reason why you don't really want really huge pockets is that this line of the bottom of your pocket shows through to your through to the outside of your pants. I'll have to get my husband to try these on and model them for you guys. Let's hope they fit good. Okay. I got my, um, you guys make your, I know a couple of you are um, needle sharp subscription box. I'm kind of uh, sad that we're not making like those things quite yet. So I don't, I will say like, so I have one stream planned per week starting next week for three weeks. And then I leave immediately to go to a show. If any of you are in Washington, come and say hi. My last show is Chicken Boots. And um, when I get back, I'm not entirely sure what the lay of the land will be like because I am closing chicken boots and I'm moving and I'll have to set this back up so um I apologize that I might be kind of dark for a bit but maybe we'll try and do something together did I do this wrong oh no I didn't do that wrong wait did I do that wrong I did do this wrong. I did both of these wrong. <laughs> Didn't I? I think I would have liked them better had they had the seam been on the outside. Nice and flat. That works though. I might fix that. <laughs> I won't make you suffer through that though. Let's see what they look like. Let's uh, stitch the side. Uh, I'm not gonna stitch the side seam down. Let's look at, the, see how they look on the inside though. I, did I really do that wrong? Does that seem wrong to you? Like, am I just forgetting how to do a French seam all of a sudden? Yeah, exactly. You're going to skip the skirt box. I actually, um, I kind of like that skirt, but the robe box, none of those are set in sleeves. Ugh. You know how I feel about set in sleeves, but my friend, Laura Jean just made the Howry. And I think that's the one in the heavyweight box, which would be the box that I get. And, um, it looks really good. So I want to talk to her and, and I want to see, I want to FaceTime with her and say, okay, raise your arm and lower it and, and tell me what you think. It looks okay. Like, I guess I kind of want the stitching to be 
I don't want that bulk in there. I know I did that right, didn't I? Why don't I like it? It's so weird. Hmm. I'll have to iron out these little hole needle holes from removing that pocket facing, but it looks cute. Yeah. Nobody will know what's inside. <laughs> All right, let's see. Where's my back? And then we have our back pockets with the wheel and the path. I don't know about those, you guys. Is that a little too much for him, you think? It's subtle. I don't know. Looks better in person. A little dark on screen, but we'll see. You're doing the lightweight and then the, oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I actually want the fabric from, I think, the medium weight for, for the jacket on the, the um, heavyweight. I'm going to pick, the, I think, the, the navy blue silk noil, but I would I, that tassel lining isn't quite for me, so I would probably just pick a different um, lining. Yeah, that's what it is, Christina. I think that's it. I know, exactly, Carol. <laughs> I guess he could pull his pockets out and say... You know, can you see? But you really, he really can't. Like, if he pulls his pockets out, they're not going to see much. But it's just, you know, something um, he and I will share. That's fine. Maybe they won't even fit. <laughs> we'll see. I think they will. I think they'll fit okay. I may have to taper the leg a little bit, but that's about it. So, um, yeah, because they're, they're pretty wide. Right? They don't look like that in the hashtag, though. They look, uh, they don't look that wide, so. All right, you guys, so I'm really looking forward to starting our um, so long next week, but I'll see you Saturday to finish these up. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna work on that, that front pocket. I may fix that. That's not quite, there's something up with that. Because um, I, I really, I actually like the way yeah, I, I knew when I was like, oh, put the wrong sides together, and then I put the the fabric. I was like, oh, now this is the wrong side? Why is that? I want it to be like that. I like that. So. Thread. All right, you guys. Um, so I added the back yoke. Uh, let's see, what else have I done? I did a flat fell seam um, here on the yoke seam. I did the fly a tiny bit different than hers, um, but enough that... Enough different, well, I don't know how enough different it was. The only thing big different I did was I trimmed off this edge on this fly facing right here, because that would be sitting here. So there would be another curved piece of fabric just sitting there. So I just trimmed that off, I searched it right off. So really there's a left front and a right front jean and they just made um, one jean pattern and then two notches at the top. So you follow one for the right front, one for the left front. So that is the big difference that I did. Um, what else, you guys? What else did I do? I did something different, didn't I? I can't think what I did. I made the pockets a little bit smaller, and I think that's it. I really do. Oh, my fly shield, I squared it off. So those are my mods on this. No big deal, just just preference of, of, of my own. And um, I think totally doable still to sew it this way, the, the way that is in the directions using me as a... <laughs> kind of a guide all right all right guys i am back to sewing other stuff gotta get ready for that show and um i hope that you guys are getting ready for the sew along next week starting next week but you can catch up like you have a couple weeks like you have time to catch up you know like we're not gonna sew a ton next week i think it's like um i can't remember i think it's the front it says on that schedule post on Instagram on the bottom left corner of each of those Mountain View images it says what we're doing on each of those. So it's kind of the like front in the pocket fly and the, po the fly and then the back is like the yokes pockets, things like that. And then the waistband and the hems third time. So see you later. I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, follow me on Instagram, so so live, and then you can see any of the um, 
schedule changes we have and any images of things coming up and um, send me an email so so live at gmail.com if you want to chat in YouTube please uh, create a YouTube channel so you can sign up you can just chat with us and say hi um, you can heckle me if you like I have mods for that they'll ban you <laughs> bye Mullen so um, take care and um, I will see you on Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. And um, happy sewing. Bye, guys.